We was on the bottom, yeah. Now we headed to the top. New level. On my level, don't see anybody. I don't see him. This right here could never stop. This could never stop. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. Hey, this right here could never stop. Hold up, nah, nah. One time, one time. Hey. I live on a job, right? Yeah, I'm always at work, right? Real people stay by me, right? Haters wanna do hurt, right? No, they trying to stop me, right? Drag my name through dirt, right? I don't feed into the hate, right? I just answer with a smirk, facts. I feel so special, facts. I know my worth, facts. My bloodline royal, facts. We the kings of the earth, right? You can't stop this, nah, nah. You can't stop this, no way. Come the scripture on. says the curses that's upon the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They will be upon us and only us. That's why when you was back there and you said, um, so-called Haitians, we're the ones who get raped, our children get kidnapped. This doesn't happen to nobody else but us. This only happens to us. Do you agree with that? On a larger scale, whose children get raped the most? Ours, right? So the thing is, you know it's happening. My question is, why does it happen? That's my question to you. Okay, remember what we read earlier. The reason these things happen is because we broke the commandments and now we're living under the curses. Let's read it again. Uh, go back to verse, read verse 45. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 45. Moreover, all these curses... So Emma, is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? A bad thing. It's a bad thing. So God says these bad things, read, shall come upon thee. It says it shall come upon you and you only. Read. Tent thee till thou be destroyed and now it the curses are so bad upon us we're so destroyed that we think our uh, other haitians are different than these so-called haitians but emma then every so-called haitian went through the same thing as the people right and then the french came and we said we got independence but if we have independence today why do we still go through the same things we went to we went through when we were still in shackles and chains why is that during the French time, we was, our, our women were getting raped, kids were getting kidnapped, taken from families, babies were sucking on their mom's breasts, were snatched away and sold to another plantation. But now our children are still getting kidnapped. After the, the, what, the earthquake hit Haiti, Haiti still looks the same as it did today, years ago. Why is it like that? Once again, it's because God says, because you don't want to keep my commandments. These curses are going to be upon you. Don't get it twisted. This Bible is very real. Everything that's happening in it is happening to us. Even if, if we're here in America today. Right? So keep reading. Do you understand that, Sister Emma? Keep reading. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee, and, and they shall be upon thee, for a sign. So this is the reason. God says these curses will be upon us for a sign. That's why that's why the so-called Haitians, they're in Haiti today. How do we get to Haiti? How? What form of transportation? Did we walk? Boats, right? Do you think that's in the Bible? Because remember, God said this will happen to the Israelites. He didn't say this will happen to Haitians. So we're going to read in the Bible that we went into slavery on slave ships so read Deuteronomy 28 verse 68 then go back to 46 the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again so God says the Israelites will go back into Egypt we're going to go in the Bible and see what Egypt means do you know what, what was happening to the children of Israel during the time of Egypt no okay we're going to get that for you this is what is the Israelites were doing in Egypt. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So God says, Emma, that we would be in bondage in Egypt. What's another word for bondage? These people right here. If you look at this sign, can you see this clearly? I know it's raining. You don't have to move. This sign right here. These people are in bondage. What are they? They're suffering. What else? 
What's what's the name of the condition they're in, they're in? It starts with an S. They're in slavery, exactly. So another word for bondage is what? It's slavery. And God says the children of Israel will be doing what in Egypt? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Bondage or slavery again. Read. With ship. With what? With ship. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then the so-called Haitians go into slavery on slave ships? But God just said the Israelites right. will go into slavery and slave ships. So if this happened to the Israelites and this happened to the so-called Haitians, who are we really? According to the Bible. We're the Israelites, exactly. But the reason we don't know this is because we are destroyed as a people. We disconnect ourselves from the Bible and we say, oh no, this Bible is written by men. This Bible can't be real. This Bible is not talking about me. Right. Whether you know it or not, sis, your entire life, your history, your people's history, your ancestors' history is in this Bible. Yeah, Don't right. ever try to disconnect yourself from it because the Bible was, has always been our book. Yeah, right. But today, we go into Christian church, they give us this white man with this white man because the doc comes with the doctrine that God loves everybody. That a white man is coming to save you. Then in the same white people go in Haiti and say, we're going to give you some money for the hurricane. We're going to give you money for the earthquake. What the hell? What does Haiti look like now today? It looks even worse than it did before. You're talking about this same white man is, is going to be with me in heaven? Oh, that's crazy. And that's not true according to the Bible. That's not true because, because Christ, the true image of Christ, the black Messiah in the Bible, is only coming to save us, the Israelites. But... In order for us to get saved, to come out of the condition we're in, what do you think we have to do, Sister Emma? Because remember, I'm going I'm to I'm bring you up to speed again. Remember, what was the reason we went into slavery? What is the reason we're still suffering today? Why do so many people not care about our, our black sisters? Why? Remember what God said? If you don't do what? He would put... There you go, because we didn't want to follow his commandments. That's the exact reason these things are still happening to us today. Because we didn't want to keep God's commandments. Finish the rest of that verse up. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So ever since we went to Haiti, we went to Jamaica, to Puerto Rico, to here in America, we never went back to our homeland. Because don't get it twisted, I know so-called Haitians are proud of Haiti, but Haiti's not our homeland. Okay, I'm glad you're not, because we're about to Haiti to, for punishment. We're about to Haiti to be slaves. Haiti's not our country. Haiti's not our country, Jerusalem is. And ever since we've been to these various places, we've never gone back to our actual homeland. Read. And then ye shall be sold. God says when you get off those slave ships, you will be sold. Weren't we sold as a people? Yeah, we were sold as a people. Look at it right here. We were sold as a people. Right here, you can see this man being sold on an auction block. They seeing how big he is, how strong he is, so they could sell his behind. Right here. Right there. It was us that was being sold as a people. Keep reading. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. That's what? Unto your enemy. I want to hit on that part right there. Emma, what just passed? Who got elected as president? Joe Biden, right? God says these same people that sold us, they're our enemies. That means even their descendants, their children are our enemies. And now, you know how many so-called Haitians went and voted for Joe Biden? So many. The same people that put us into slavery. The same people, and we wanted to vote for him. There's no difference between Joe Biden and Trump. God says he, they are the enemies. They're the ones who did this to us. And they're still doing it today. The majority of the police. So-called white people. Our enemies. God says because we didn't want to keep the commandments, these things will happen to us. This is in 2020. Are we still getting shot down? Yeah. Still getting shot down here? Even in Haiti, we still get shot down. We still get oppressed as a people. Right. Keep reading. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. It says no man shall save you. Jean-Jacques Dessalines, he tried to save us. Yeah, we got so-called free, but <laughs> look how we are now. We had to pay a debt to the French, and now Haiti's the, what, the poorest country in the, was it the Eastern Hemisphere? In the world. 
in the world, the poorest country in the world. Trump called it a SH whole country. Why? Because we are living under the curses as a people. What do you got? Oh, that's a that's, that's a good question. I like you, man. You that's a good question. The sister asks, "What are we going to do to not be cursed?" I'm going to show you that right now. Because remember, we these things happen to us because we broke the commandments. So I'm going to ask you a question: What do you think we should do so we won't be cursed? Before I get the scripture. There you go. We're supposed to follow the commandments. Exactly. Let's see. Let's hear it out of the Bible. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore. It says repent. Remember, don't get it twisted. Repentance is only for the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. You are not a Haitian. You're from the tribe of Levi. Right. You are not a black woman. You are an Israelite woman, a princess of God. And you have to start carrying yourself as such because whether you know it or not, sis, you are royalty. And that's what the Bible says. Right. All right? Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So the Bible says to repent. What does it mean to repent? Bring Psalms 19 and 7. What do you think it means? Take a guess. Okay, I like that answer. Okay, that's a good, honest answer. Repent means to change. But what what makes us change? That's the, that's the thing we have to get into. What makes us change? Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What does the law do? Converting the soul. So the laws of God is what changes us. We have to start keeping the commandments. Not just the ten. Like the Christian church says, like the Baptist church says, Seventh-day Adventist church says, because all they're teaching you is lies. The Bible says we have to keep God's laws. All of God's laws. What do we have to do to change? We have to keep the what? God's commandments, exactly. That's what we have to do to change as a people. Once we start doing that, God will be on our side, and then we won't suffer as much as we do as a people. Notice I said people. It's not just one individual. The what? No, there's, there's, there's more than 10 commandments. And I'm actually going to show you one right now. All right, read. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women... So now, it's getting specific. This is specifically for a woman, which you are. Read. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. The Bible says women must adorn themselves. What do you think the word adorn means? A-D-O-R-N. Okay, it's okay if you don't know. The word adorn means to put on. To put on or dress yourselves. Read it again. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What does modest mean? Modest means old? No. No, modest don't eat mo does not mean old. Conservative. Okay, I like that word. I mean, almost like this. Okay, why do you say almost like that? Because uh, it wouldn't be so tight. Oh, I'm glad you said that. See, at least you're honest. <laughs> at least you're honest. So you know. So you know because this is the standard God has for His daughters. So I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you an example. Do you have? Do you have kids? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a daughter? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna use your daughter as an example then. Now. Now you see how our women raise our daughters nowadays. I see five-year-olds with booty shorts on and a crop top. Is that appropriate for a little girl to wear? In the type of world we live in today? It's not. So, you have a daughter and you're a daughter. Do you think God the Father would want you to dress that way? No. What is that? The definition of modest? So now, knowing that, we're going to get the definition of modest because it hits harder than you think. All right? Read. This is the definition of modest. Dressing or behaving so as to avoid improperty or indecency. Especially to avoid attracting sexual attention. So God, right here. Not only does God give you a law, but he gives you a benefit to go with it. He said all these thirsty men that be whistling at you saying, Hey baby, let me holler at you right quick. 
the main reason they do those things to you is because of the way our sisters dress. And as an Israelite from the tribe of Levi, you have to set a different standard. Because this world, all they know is tight pants, short shorts, booty jiggling everywhere, and their breasts out. And that's the truth. But God says, if you're royalty, sis, if you're a princess, you need to dress like one. When was the last time you actually seen, I'm talking about a royal queen, like actual queen, wear pants or anything tight or show any part of their body? Never. But them white people over there that call themselves queens they're, they're, or princesses or royalty, they're not royalty. God says so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are the Israelites, we are royalty. Right. And we have to start dressing like this. And it's the sis right now, it starts with you. Right. So yes, you are wearing a dress, but like you said earlier, it's too what? It's too tight. There you go. So you say you have kids. Do you have a husband? You have a husband. Do you think your husband would want other men looking at you the way he looks at you when you wear something, you know, nice for him? Right. No. What you wear, something like that should be in the privacy of your own home around your husband. He's the only man that should be able to see your shape, curves, and edges. Not for everybody else to see. Because that's how you attract dogs. If you look like, how you, you know how girls say nowadays, oh, I want to look like a whole snack. Well, you're going to attract a man that wants a quick bite and he's going to get up and leave. You see what I'm saying, sis? This Bible is real. Read it again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves. So the women must dress themselves, read. In modest apparel. You must look modest. Don't get modest twisted with looking like a grandpa. Our sisters, when they dress modest, they look beautiful. They look bad. But only if it's a, according to God's dress code. All right, sis? Is that it? With shamefacedness and sobriety. So it said with shamefacedness. Remember, you can dress nice, look modest all you want, but don't let everything about you be the outside appearance. Because that's how most of our women are today. It's hair, hair done, nails done, everything dead. And meanwhile, they're not keeping the commandments. Remember, it's the laws that changes your soul. So you gotta, you gotta look good on the inside and out at the same time. Book of Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Another name for Zion is the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. God is saying it's time for us to wake up as a people because we are asleep as hell. We let society raise us. We think everything that the white man pushes on the media, on social media, on TV, that's how we're supposed to live. But God says, nah, it's time for us to wake up. Read. Put on thy beautiful garment. God says, put on that beautiful what? Put on thy beautiful garment. God says, put on your beautiful garment. Which lets you know you're not going to be dressing like... Which lets you know you're not going to be dressing like, you know, like an old grandma. With like a plaited dress and some sandals. God says, our sisters look beautiful, but only when they're modest. So you said you are married and you have children, right? What do you think your job is as a wife and a mother? Now that you know you're an Israelite. Give me Titus 2, please. Okay, you can be modest. And who are you going to teach to be modest? You're, what else? Okay. You said a few good things. The main thing you want to do is teach your daughter to be modest also. Because do you let your daughter wear pants? How old is she? If you don't mind me asking. She's eight years old. Go ahead, read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 29. Huh? Do not prostitute thy daughter. It says what? Do not prostitute thy daughter. Oh, it says don't prostitute your daughter. I'm going to give an example. You know, you know what a prostitute is, right? How do prostitutes advertise themselves selling their body so there you go the way they dress is how a prostitute advertises themselves and now so remember the bible says don't prostitute your daughter read it again do not prostitute thy daughter to do what to cause her to be a whore to what to cause her to be a whore i know you didn't think that was in the bible that's in the Bible. God says, don't prostitute your daughter. Don't let her dress with skinny tights. Uh, uh, what are the things called? Them leggings. Don't prostitute your daughter. Because that's how women try to get some, you know, some D. They dress sexy and then they are outraged when they suddenly attract a man who wants sex. 
But now we have our sisters prostituting their daughters. You may not have been doing it intentionally, but the Bible says you are prostituting your daughter. And one of the ways is how she dressed, her attire, how you let your daughter dress. So now knowing that, there's some changes you have to do with your, your and your daughter's wardrobe. But we're going to finish this first. Do you agree with what the Bible said, sis? Because I see your eyes are looking everywhere. Remember, these are not our words. This is God's words. Uh-huh. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, sis. See? And that's the example I bought earlier. Your husband don't want other men looking at you. Now, imagine. If your husband don't want other men looking at you, imagine a, a, a father and his daughter. Imagine that. With long pants. You know how many sick men are out here? After little girls? If he's child molesters. If he's saying that to you, imagine how he must feel about his little girl. His little princess. But sis, does she wear pants regardless? And we're gonna get that. Does she wear pants? Okay, we're gonna get that. You think it's safer for her to, to wear a dress? Oh my goodness, I've never heard of something like that. Okay, okay, I'm, okay, I'm clap. okay, 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 now I see why you say that. Okay, I'm going to finish the scripture, and then give me Titus 2. I got you, sis, I got you. I mean, Deuteronomy. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29, oh. lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. So give me um, Titus chapter 2 now. Now it says, don't prostitute your daughter lest the land fall to whoredom. And that's what you see in America today. America is the land of whoredom. If every, if every so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American women taught their daughters how to dress according to what God says, it would be much safer for our little girls. Much, much safer. All right? So the thing that you said, you said you think it's safer for your little girl to wear pants because little girls don't know how to sit right i know how it is i know how it is i had a little sister when she was younger she used to when she wear dresses they would do dumb stuff they would like sit awkward put the little girls most of the time you got to teach them to cross their legs when they're sitting down keep their legs closed and you said she'd be playing with boys this is what you need to do as a wife and a mother as an israelite according to the bible read the book of titus chapter 2 verse 3 the aged woman likewise so it says the aged woman talking about the older women the women with more experience them the women that's been there done that they see it didn't work and they can tell the younger generation right. to do what that they be in behavior as become its holiness so you yourself god says you have to be holy right. what does it mean to be holy emma Bring it even if you don't know take a guess what do you think being holy means people use that word they have no idea what it means right. what do you think Okay, I like that. Okay. Okay. Okay, those are all good answers. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. The way you just explained how a holy woman is supposed to be, is that how most women in the world act like? So, you're supposed to be what from those other women? There you go. You're supposed to be different. You're supposed to be separate. When somebody sees you and a regular woman, they should be able to tell that is a woman of God right there. Right. Because she doesn't carry herself the same way as other women do. Bring it out. And then they'll see your daughter and say, oh my gosh, her daughter is the same way. That means she's teaching her kids right. right. So read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. For I, the Lord, am holy. This is the reason God says you have to be separate. We have to be holy because God is holy. Read. And have severed you from other people. God says you have to be holy because I didn't make you like everybody else. Right. These laws were only meant for us. These laws is what makes us holy. Now go back to the Titus 2. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. The aged woman likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Not false accusers, not given to much wine. God says you can't be a woman that's always in the club drunk. You can drink a brother under the damn table. God says you can't be like that. You can't be gossiping either. Talk about, oh God, let me tell you what he did. You know what Kiki did with him and this and that? See, you laughing. See, you laughing. You laughing because that's how our women are. That's what's portrayed on the TV. Like what's that them shows called? Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Atlanta Housewives? 
Bad Girls Club. Oh my goodness, Bad Girls Club. <laughs> I remember that show. Keep reading. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. These good, the good things are in this Bible. Tell your daughter, no, you can't wear pants. You have to wear a dress. You can't be loud. Stop being a ratchet. Stop trying to fight men. Crush your legs. Keep your legs closed. Remain a virgin until your father picks a man for you to marry. Those are the good things in the Bible. Keep reading. That they may teach the young women to be sober. To be what? To be sober. Teach the who? Teach the young women. So this is where your part comes in. After you start applying these laws to your life, you need to teach your daughter the same exact thing. Right. To not be loud. It's it's your see you you said she don't cross her legs. Whose job is it to teach her that? Okay. And if she don't do it, what do you got to do? You got to discipline that behind. You got to whoop her. I know Levi. I know I know Levi. So called Haitians. We love to whoop kids. We love some baton, some discipline. When they. It's true. God says you have to discipline your children. It's your job as a mother, especially for your daughter. Because you don't want her to turn out like these other little girls in the world. Keep reading. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. That's what you got to teach. How to love your husband. How to, when your husband come home, cook for him. Hey, this is what you do when you're older. When you look for a man, look for a man like your father because he's a righteous man of God. That's what you need to teach your daughter. And then your man, your husband sounds like he's in the right mindset if he doesn't want you to wear tight pants, if he says you reveal yourself too much. he All he's missing is to read this Bible, sis. Do you agree with that? Well, what the Bible says. Do you agree with that, sis? All right, remember, it's God saying it. I'll hold that right quick. Give me Deuteronomy 22.5 because I'm not going to let that part go. The part about what you said, you think it's safer for your daughter to wear pants. No, it's not safe. Um, give me that bathroom sign while I read this. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Oh. The woman shall not wear. So now, it's specific again. It's specifically for the woman. Read. Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. I'm going to use your husband as an example. How would you feel if you came home one day? You came home, you're happy to see your husband. And your husband... He comes to the door, he's missing, and then you see your husband wearing a dress. How would you feel? That's not my husband. Oh, you said that's not your husband. Ah, that's a good answer. You look at your husband like he's crazy, like, what the hell are you doing? I trust me, if you you came home and your husband wearing a dress, hell no. You think your husband is crazy or something. Well, he's a little going the other way. <laughs> All right? So here's my next thing, right? Read that verse again, and I'm going to ask you another question. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So it says, I met, what, what are some uh, women's clothing that men should not wear? Name them off the top of your head. What are some women's clothing that men are not supposed to wear? Dresses, you hit it right on the head. What else? Underwear. Girls underwear. What else? Bra, high heels, lipstick, makeup, wigs. <laughs> All those things. Men are not supposed to wear those things. So now, what do men wear that women are not supposed to wear? Pants. Pants. Thank you. you see, you hit it right on the head. So here's another question for you. This is a real life scenario. When you go into the bathroom, how do you know which bathroom to go into? How do you know to go into the women's bathroom? Because it has a what? It has a dress on her. This day and age, they try to change it. They, I've seen a damn bathroom sign where it's a man and he has half a dress on. Do you see the confusion in that? That's not according to God. That's what the world wants. And your daughter, you're supposed to teach your daughter. Your daughter cannot wear pants and neither can you, sis. That goes for shorts, too. That goes for booty shorts. Uh, pants, whatever. There's no, there's no such thing as women pants. So you can get that out your head right now. You have to tell your daughter, no, you cannot wear pants. You're going to wear a dress because that's what God wants from you and her. Because whether you know it or not, you are still God's daughter, sis. We used to scream Black Power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. I U I C has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. 
Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.